G'day, Chief. You know, the journey to high performance can be pretty complex and it's really easy to get a bit lost along the journey. And, you know, I've met a lot of leaders over the years that sit there and go, I don't know the next step. Like, we, we're trying this, we're trying that. We're doing good stuff with culture. We're doing personality testing. Um, we've got new systems coming in to help our people do their work, but we don't seem to be achieving high performance. For one reason or another, they just they just miss what's actually going on. And I remember this one time I was asked by a, a guy, I was doing a keynote speech, and we were just on the topic of morning rituals and setting yourself up for success every single day in personal prioritization. And this gentleman asked me, he said, hey, hey Greg, every day I sit down and do my prioritization, but as the day gets going, I just lose focus, I lose track, and I, I go off onto some different tangent. I get distracted from the core work I know is so important. I mean, who hasn't been there? That's just a classic challenge in this highly complex, fast-moving world we're operating. It's a symptom of overload, you know, that we're, so many of us are suffering from now. And one of the things I just said to him was, you know, listen, can you just tell me what is the process that you actually go through? When you sit down in the morning, what is your what is your little ritual? What is step one, step two, step three? And how do you prioritize? And the gentleman thought about it for a minute and he said, oh, you know, actually, I don't really know the exact process. You know, I go back to that saying from Edwards Deming, and this is what I said to him, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. And that sounds a bit harsh, but what it really means is if you don't know what your process is, you can't improve it. And I want you to think about right now, what is your process? What is your framework for building high performance? And if you don't have one, if you don't have something as a backup or something that you're following as a blueprint for success, it's going to be super difficult. In fact, I would say it's almost impossible to build high performance unless you have some sort of understanding or mental model around what it is you're doing. The Chief Maker High Performance Teams Framework is broken up into a couple of different parts. Firstly, there's five elements or five core pillars that we refer to that drive high performance teams. And then there's actually a 10 step process or over two major stages that help you implement high performance teams. So let's just talk through those quickly. The first is our high performance teams framework. There are five key pillars to this framework. The first is your mission. And the mission is setting about the why you're doing things and the destination you're going to. It's having a clear vision and goal, stick to that bigger purpose with a clear strategy and roles to align the group. There was a great study by HBR, Harvard Business Review, of around about 100,000 executives and they asked three key questions. Firstly, do you know the vision of your business? Do you know the strategy for getting there? And third, do you know your role in achieving that? And the results were quite remarkable. Only 30% of people knew the vision, only 40% knew the strategy, and only 30% knew their role. And the article went on to say that if this was a soccer team or a football team with 11 players, only 30% of players, or only three players, would know which direction they were running. Only four of the players would know the plan for how they're gonna pass it up the field and put it in the net. And only three of those players would know the number on their back and where they're gonna stand on the pitch. And isn't that remarkable? Consider for a minute, what is the quality of your mission for your team? Have you really clearly laid that out? Does everybody know exactly where you're going, why you're going, why you're going there, and the way or the steps, the projects you're going to do in order to get there. That's step one, or the first pillar is around having a very clear mission. Number two is about getting the right people. This is forming the guiding coalition that's going to take your team through a whole step change in performance. It's about getting the wrong people off the bus, putting them in the right seats, giving them the right development plans, and making sure that they are becoming the very best version of themselves. The third element is all about culture, and this is about creating an environment that when people come to work, it's exciting, there's trust, there's challenge, there's feedback, they're growing every single day. There's wonderful rituals and traditions that, that cement the relationships that create a sense of belonging to the team. The fourth pillar is all about tools, and this is the collateral, the scoreboards, the metrics, the software, the systems and processes that allow your people to do their work. 
And the last is execution. With so much big change and high performance falls over. This is about having the right schedule and operating with them. Dealing and engaging with your stakeholders so they're ambassadors and fans. De-risking your strategy, having good business acumen. That's execution. And when you link all five of those together, that's when you get a high performance team. But one of the interesting things I found in high performance is that while they're the pillars, that's not necessarily the order in which you would roll them out across your team. And that's why we've got this particular framework where we talk about there's two major stages to building your high performance team. Stage one is around uniting the team. And stage two is around then embedding and leading a high performance culture. So if you think about stage one, it's where we talk about philosophies, frameworks, environment, knowing what's going on now. It's then forming the team, finding the right people, recruiting, getting rid of low performers or toxic individuals. It's then uniting that team and aligning them behind the mission, getting your purpose, your why, your vision, your strategy, all really, really clear, right? And then it's about executing with precision by setting in place the right operating rhythm to begin with. And that's almost like if you were, if you were a ship's captain and you're going to go on a journey, what you've done now is you've decided the destination. You've decided why you want to go there. Maybe you want to go to some beautiful tropical island so you can reconnect with your soul and have a wonderful experience with the people that you're going to, that you're going to sail with. You know, you've picked the destination. You've worked out how you're going to get there. And that's the route you're going to take across the seas. You've also decided where are the different stoppages are going to be. This is where you're executing the position. You've decided what is going to be all the supplies on the boat, how much resources you need. You've got everything ready to go. That's uniting the team. You're off and running. And there's no, absolutely no doubt in people's mind about what is going to happen. And what we almost say about uniting the team is this is about deciding where you're going and then setting sail and getting out of the blocks or getting away from the harbour into the open sea. And once you're going, once you're actually moving then, this is when we create the high performance culture. This is where we really embed the rituals and traditions and the habits that happen every single day or each quarter that really unite the team, that create this wonderful electric environment. Okay, This is where we really focus on stakeholders, but not just stakeholders internal in business. We talk about suppliers and customers, everybody that you work with being an ambassador of you and your team. We talk about leading like a coach, really, really working and acting like the head coach of a high performance sporting team. Working with your people to make them the very best version of themselves. Then we talk about raising the bar. And this is where high performance really, really starts to get to what I say ninja level. When you start to raise the bar with high quality feedback, really strong standards, where people are holding each other accountable because there's so much trust in the group. That's raising the bar. And then last of all is where you change the game. And this is where you look to dominate the industry, to change the way your particular team does things that just creates a whole new way of operating. It's interrupting the market. But you can't interrupt the market until you know your philosophies, frameworks and environment, until you've got the team and the team is been together on a journey and understands what's going on. So what we're going to work through is these elements. I'm going to talk you through each and every one of these particular stages and all the steps through them. So that when you're going through this process of leading a high performance team, you're not guessing. You're making smart decisions. You're making precise decisions. You're pulling the right little lever in the right order so that your team continuously moves along the journey to high performance. It's constantly moving up. And when momentum stalls, we come back to these frameworks. That way, we know what we're doing. We can improve our process. We can get better at it. We can adjust it for our own individual team's needs. Okay, Chief, just to summarize some of those points, High performance teams do five powerful things very, very well. Mission, people, culture, tools, and execution. And they implement those pillars 
through the process of, first of all, the five steps of uniting the team and then leading the team to a high performance culture. It's very important you set the foundations and form that team and set the destination really, really clear with the unite the team stage. And then once the team has set sail, then you can create that incredible high performance culture. But if you can imagine you tried to build a high performance culture, but you hadn't spent the time to get the right people on the bus, you hadn't set the mission, you know, you hadn't set the strategy and tactics or a clear governance plan, it's gonna fail. You're gonna drift off in the wrong direction and the headwinds are gonna stop you. You'll splinter as a team and end up being toxic. So set those foundations right and then you can move into creating a high performance culture. And of course, it doesn't matter how far along the journey you are. It doesn't matter if you've got a new team, a team that's been around for a while. When you decide to go on a journey to high performance, it's like a line in the sand moment. Right now you say, okay guys, let's all come together and let's think, do we have the right people for this journey? Okay, you might have to make some hard calls. Once again, form that guiding coalition, go through the process of resetting the mission, set those foundations, and then you go towards high performance culture. And as you go along, dependent on your maturity, some of the steps you go through, you'll be able to go through faster than others. That might be because you've already got 90% of a great team, or maybe you're really happy with the team you've currently got and you think they can go all the way. In which case, fantastic, you form the team, you go through that step quite quickly. That's okay, because you're gonna find other steps even more difficult than other people. And that's the journey to high performance, a very individual, you know, team-specific journey. It's hard based on personality, experience, environment, team, the work kind of work you do. Everything changes, but the core principles are the same, and you'll need to use your nous and some pragmatism in deciding exactly what's right for you along this journey. Right, I check. Just to finish off this quick module, I want you to just do two exercises from where, or answer two questions. First of all, how are you going with the five major steps of our framework? Mission, people, culture, tools, and execution. Think for a minute. How clear and how well developed is the mission of your team? The vision, the values, the purpose, the strategy and the tactics for getting there? Do you have the right team of people? If the right people on the bus, the wrong people off, are they all, have they all got really good, clear development plans? Are they in the right roles? What about culture? Do you have the right rituals and traditions? Are you learning as a team? Are you doing things that connect, create belonging and cement the relationships and deepen the trust? Have you got the right tools, the right scoreboards, metrics, systems, software, hardware, collateral, so people can do their job? And last of all, do you have the right execution plan? The right operating rhythm for that, as well as the stakeholder engagement, the risk, the, the risk in your program has been de-risked and you've got good business acumen throughout your team. How are you going with those five pillars? Then number two, what part of this 10-step journey are you on? I said there's 10 steps. The first five steps are unite the team. The second five steps are lead the high performance culture. Have you gone well in those and where are you up to? And, and remember, if you haven't properly formed the team, if you don't have the right people on the bus right now, then you need to go all the way back to that point. If you're comfortable, you think that you have nailed all the right people on the bus in the right role with the right development plan, then you can go to unite the team. Anyway, what I'd like you to just think about for a minute, and you don't have to do anything about this just yet, because we just want to understand the frameworks in some depth, is what part of the 10-step journey do you think you're on?